In this video, we're going to look at student enrollment forecast and projection. In educational planning, the forecast and projection of student enrollment is vital because it enables the planner to plan ahead to know the total number of resources that will be required and how much it will cost and how we we'll get to get the requirements. So in the student enrollment forecast and projection, it's an important aspect of educational planning. It helps the planner to take a decision on educational resources. There are two methods that could be used. One, you use the extrapolation method, the extrapolation of the past trend method. And secondly, you could use the student flow method. But whereby the data, uh, you don't have the accurate data, the extrapolation of the past trend method become very useful. So let's see how this goes. When data Detailed data and information are not available. Enrollment projection based on the past trend method will be very useful. Now, this is based on two uh, uh, dates. For example, you may have 2005 and 2014. So it means you just pick two dates. They may not be concurrent, but at least you have two dates, data on two dates. Then you find out the growth enrollment between the two dates. What is the growth enrollment between 20? 2005 and 2014 in this case. Now you look up again, extrapolate the obtained growth rate to obtain the future enrollment. Now you, the enrollment growth rate formula is, here we have the arrow into anti-log and using the anti-log, you have the log into EN over EO over N minus one. Now this one can be translated to this formula to obtain the future enrollment you now have this one. So if you are taking the growth rate, you have that formula, but for the future enrollment, you have ENT, which is equals to EO into one plus RO all raised to power N. Where, what does this formula represent? The R here represents enrollment growth rate, the EN, the enrollment in the more recent of the two dates. E.g., if you are using 2014, this one is more recent than 2005. Then EO, we are talking about <clears throat> the initial year. In this case, 2005. Then N, we are talking about the number of years between the two dates. What is the number of years between 2005 and 2014? That is what N represents. Then the ENT, the projected enrollment in year T, a year to be decided by the planner. So in that case, it means it depends on the situation, what you want to find, provide solution to. We are in 2019, you may decide to project into 2025 and so on. So let's, let's look at a question here. What does the question say? Project student enrollment in the following data. Here we have 2008, we have 50,000 student enrolled. That is the base year. Then you have in 2014, 70,000 students are enrolled. That is the current year. Now, what is the N? The N is the difference between the two years that we are working with. That is for 2014 minus 20, 2008. So if you have 2014 minus 2008, that will give us six. That is the difference between the two years. Then you have the R, the growth rate to be determined. That is the R. Then you have the 2020. That is the year that you need to project. Now, what do we do to get this? The answer, obtain the growth rate. So the first thing is for you to bring in the, uh, the formula that we had. This is the formula. And you substitute into the formula. Here, if you go by the formula, the EN here, the enrollment in the current year is 70,000. And the enrollment in the initial year is 50,000 over N. What is the N? The number between the two years, six. So when you substitute, it will give you this. And you, what it will give you anti-log into 0.0244 minus 1. And if you work it further, that will give you this. But however, this area that has yellow is a pointer for us. Because if you need to get your anti-log from the calculator, what do you need to do? There are two ways you can achieve this. To get your uh, anti-log, you press the shift button and the log number to be converted. Or type the number and press 10 raised to power n in the button. Then you will have your anti-log. The minus 1. So you have brought it, so you have looked at the anti-log of 0 0.0244, it gives you 1.0578 minus 1, it will give you 0 0.0578, and that, if you work it out because of approximation, that will give you 0 0.06, that means this 7, you approximate it to uh, add it to uh, make it one, add it to this, give you six, and that will give you six percent. So it means the growth rate between 2008 and 2014 is 
0.06 or 6%, holding arrow constant to focus. So if now we want to focus, we are going to hold this arrow constant. That means the 6% will be constant for the remaining years. Remember, we're going to have from 2014, 2015, 20 to 2020. So for the number of years, we're going to be held constant. So this is it. Right here, 2020 enrollment is projected as use 2014 as initial year so this will now be our initial year 2014 and remember therefore the eo which is 2014 enrollment is what 70,000. and here you have the en the en is the year that we want to project which is not yet known to us it's yet unknown then the end is six years we are looking at between 2020 and 2040. So if you remove 2014 from 2020, it will give us six years. So the R is what now? Remember, you are going to look for your growth rate using this same formula. So if you we already have the arrow here, so pick the arrow which we have uh, arrived at as well. This is the arrow which we are holding constant. So you are not reworking it again. You come back here, pick it, and that gives us the 6% we have here. So therefore, what is that T, the 2020 we want to project? So substitute the data available into the following formula. Remember, we had this formula that we were given initially. So substitute it into it. And when you substitute, what will that give? Well, Roman from 2020 equals 2014 enrollment into one plus calculated growth rate. So this will give us, this is 70,000. Remember, this is the initial year, which is the, our 2014. Then into uh, one plus R, the arrow is 0 0.06. Into raised to power N, what is N again? That N is giving us uh, six. So when you work it out, it's going to give you 70 times this. And when you times it will give you 99,400. So this implies that in year 2020, the enrollment is going to be 99,400. Now, projection based on student flow method. When you are looking at the, student, uh, the projection based on student flow method, there are two things you need to look at in this area. Here, you have to consider the up-to-date method of projection. It makes use of the student flow parameter here you're going to look at the promotion repetition and dropout these are key things you need to look at when you are made basing your projection what you just finished is on extrapolation but we'll work more on this to see how but remember if you are projecting based on repetition as based on the student flow you have to get accurate data you need to look at the promotion you need to look at the repetition you need to look at the dropout rates